So today we're talking with Judith Garcia, the CEO of Onxio. Good morning, Judith. Good morning. Onxio has changed significantly over the last several years. Can you please briefly explain us your latest focus areas in terms of technology and potential indications? With pleasure. Hi, everyone. Um, so indeed, uh, Onxio is uh, now focused on a, a special therapeutic area or, or special or specific uh, research area, which is called DDR, which is DNA Damage Response in Oncology. Um, and, and this is resulting from a strategic switch of the company uh, we were more, you know, in, in reformulation years ago, and uh, we've decided to uh, move into a more biotech-like model, uh, acquired two companies at the time, uh, Topo Target uh, in Denmark and, uh, and DNA Therapeutics four years ago, uh, which was a spin-off in France of some academic units. And, um, and uh, we've decided, because the technique and the science is extremely appealing, we've decided to focus our research on that DDR space, uh, which was the space of um, uh, uh, DNA therapeutics. Excellent, thank you for that. Can you please give, give us the latest update on the two lead clinical trials, DRIVE 1B and Reorgan, as you call them? Yeah, so um, those clinical trials are aiming to show uh, the two, let's say, uh, uh, a pass of development of our uh, lead compound acidna. Acidna is in clinical stage, obviously. Uh, this is a double strand DNA, uh, which has a mechanism of action of, it, of being a decoy agonist. That's a very unique mechanism of action. And it interferes with uh, most of the uh, DNA repair pathways. And, and among all, uh, the DNA PK pathway is the one Acidna is, is uh, inhibiting uh, the most. Um, Acidna being a DNA repair inhibitor, it was making lots of sense to add Acidna or to combine Acidna with DNA breakers. You, you combine you know, a, a cytotoxic uh, chemotherapy, which breaks DNA, and you combine it with a signal, which prevents DNA reparation and makes lots of sense that the efficacy should be synergistic. Uh, this is the first pass that we followed. Um, and after a first phase one trial, IV, uh, administration of Acidna, which uh, showed a very nice safety profile. Uh, we extended that DRIVE study, phase one study DRIVE, into DRIVE 1B, uh, which is combining Acidna to chemotherapies. Here we're talking carboplatin and paclitaxel in patients which are eligible to those uh, treatment scheme and, and uh, assess first of all, efficacy of uh, safety, obviously, and then signal of efficacy. And we have uh, already nice signals of efficacy um, showing that um, uh, the, the, the disease in those patients is controlled much longer than uh, what would have been expected uh, with uh, chemotherapy, chemotherapies only. Uh, this is the drive 1B. We've completed um, uh, enrollment. Uh, we, have we are still following a few patients uh, which are still under, under treatment and we're expecting top line, full top line data uh, uh, somewhere early 2021, of course, depending how long those patients will be under treatment. Uh, and, uh, and that's again, will give us um, uh, the, uh, the signal of efficacy. And we are already uh, thinking further as we are preparing the phase two uh, based on the first uh, favorable signals of efficacy we have in the first patients. We're preparing the phase two to assess the combination again of Astina with chemotherapies uh, in, uh, in uh, some, uh, some specific indication. The other path of development of Acidna uh, is uh, relying on the very specific properties of the product, which is that uh, the addition of Acidna 
to in a tumor which is treated with a targeted therapy and then the, let's say the targeted therapy class we have the most data with our uh, BARP inhibitors so when a, a tumor is treated a, a tumor treated uh, by a BARP inhibitor like Mirapari for example will at some point express resistance and overcome BARP inhibitor efficacy and Mirapari efficacy and resistance will emerge. The addition of Asina at that point allows to reverse the resistance to PARP inhibitor. And we all know that in oncology, there are more and more efficient treatment, which is a very good thing, but most, most, if not all those treatments will face at some point resistance. Tumors is able, are able to put on some specific uh, pathway to overcome the efficacy of those targeted therapies. Um, and, and, and we believe, again, uh, based on the ACIDNA mechanism of action that uh, uh, adding ACIDNA prevent or reverse the emergence of that resistance, which would obviously, you know, if that's confirmed in clinic, uh, definitely change um, uh, 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 the use of, of those targeted therapies and, and how, you know, patients can be treated. So that's the second path of development, working, let's say, or, um, acting on resistance uh, um, to targeted therapies. And for that, we have a first phase 1B2, which has started in collaboration with Gustav Rusty Institute. Uh, and that phase 1B2 aim at showing that the addition of acidna in patients suffering from ovarian advanced cancer treated with nehaparib in maintenance, second line for at least six months. Uh, at that point of time, we know that emergence should you know, occur uh, not so, not, not in such a long time. And so we're adding a signal when the biomarker marking the emergence of resistance increase, uh, then we're adding a signal. And the goal is to show that uh, the CA125, which is the biomarker of, of, of resistance of ovarian cancer or ovarian cancer progression, uh, uh, goes down, you know, reduces again, uh, and, and, and obviously that will uh, result in, uh, in uh, prolonging or uh, delaying uh, the clinical resistance. That's the Revocan study. Again, first, first patient was recruited end of October. Uh, and um, this, this uh, study aims at uh, enrolling uh, 26 patient maximum, uh, but uh, and we believe that uh, we expect to have you know first uh, group of patients outcome or data uh, probably um, Q2, let's say mid next year. Could you now please tell us more about what other clinical trials uh, are in advanced planning stage or what's next for you? Yeah, so as I as I was saying, for the first, let's say, or the the the, you know, the first uh, pass of development in combination with chemotherapies, we are already preparing the next step, which is a phase two uh, in a selected indication. Things are not totally um, uh, finalized yet, um, so we're still, you know, we're discussing with our investigators, we are experts. Uh, to, to assess, you know, what will be the best context and the best indication to choose um, uh, and the best uh, somewhat uh, trial setting. Um, but uh, but uh, we expect to file our dossier uh, early next year uh, and to stop the, stu the study as soon as mid next year. Uh, uh, again, because we already believe that the, the data that we have uh, are supporting uh, the, um, the implementation of a phase two trial for confirmatory uh, efficacy data. We are also working on, uh, on uh, other um, uh, clinical trials, uh, mostly in combination with uh, targeted therapies. So besides Revocan, again, which is in combination with Nerapareb in ovarian cancer in maintenance to, pre to reverse resistance, there are other uh, settings uh, for which we believe it could make sense to add a signal to prevent resistance, either in other tumor types or in other 
tumor genetic profiles. Uh, and, and this is what we're working on. And we're expecting also to, to uh, implement probably another study next year uh, in, uh, in, uh, in combination with a targeted therapy. The goal of the company and the strategy of the company, as you hopefully have understood, um, there are many ways uh, of utilization for SCNA. There are very, uh, a very large number of, of different indications for which SCNA could make sense. So what we are aiming to do is set up, you know, as many as possible proof of concept studies. We don't intend to do large and, and long lasting, you know, a, a clinical trial, but more, you know, to, um, uh, have all our cards ready in the game with some, you know, proof of concept, uh, let's say, um, uh, with, with a few dozens of patient studies uh, to prove uh, the, in, the clinical interest of Asidna in various settings so that we can build uh, the optimal value on the compound uh, and, and be, you know, as strong as possible discussing, you know, a licensing out or um, a various partnership opportunities, having on our, in our hands uh, all the proof of, uh, you know, as many um, uh, utilization of SINA as possible. I see, thank you. So now we're living in unusual times. How is the COVID-19 pandemic affecting you? I saw that you managed to initiate the uh, real control in October despite the ongoing you know, widespread restrictions. Well, that's, uh, that's definitely, um, uh, first of all, we've learned uh, how to work, you know, remotely. Um, so uh, we're very good at that now. Um, the, the lab, uh, as uh, we are doing uh, quite a large part of the preclinical experimentation in-house, we have a lab. Uh, we also have our own, you know, in vivo team. Uh, which, which in that situation is a very good thing because they've been able to, uh, you know, uh, advancing uh, the preclinical pre plan mostly as planned. Uh, I'm not saying there is zero, zero impact, but very, very light impact on the preclinical aspect, again, because most of it is done internally. Um, on the clinical side, um, our luck also is probably that uh, uh, we are we are doing our luck, or, and, and that's also related to our strategy. You know, we are performing small or medium-sized uh, clinical trial. Um, so, so drive one B, which was uh, uh, up and running, uh, is uh, is implemented in two sites. Um, so we were able to maintain uh, uh, you know, the activity. There's probably be some weeks of, of delay during summer because you know, the site had to recover after the COVID, but, but that was not a you know, major impact again because we had already uh, six out of the nine patients treated. So we were able already to look at the data. Uh, and on the Revocan, we've been able to get uh, the, uh, the regulatory approval on time and, uh, and implement the study pretty much on time. So because we don't have, you know, long, large uh, clinical trials, we are not really uh, 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 largely uh, uh, impacted. Um, probably, you know, uh, sometimes it takes more time to do some stuff, but, uh, but that's, not, uh, that's not really impacting, you know, the, uh, the course of the company. So Asina was the first asset from your proprietary platform. Can you please tell us what else uh, you have in the pipeline? Sure. So Asidna is, uh, as you said, the first asset born from a, a chemistry platform, uh, which is uh, proprietary to us. And that proprietary platform is aiming to design, or we are through that platform, we are designing compounds which will all be based on the same pattern of uh, double strand oligonucleotide with a, a vector to improve cellular uptake, a looping agent to reduce or to increase stability. And they all will work with the same uh, uh, type of action, which is to be a decoy agonist. 
Um, that being said, uh, based on the knowledge that we have built uh, the past years, uh, we know what you know uh, what lengths of oligonucleotides will um, have you know a specific uh, um, uh, interference with with a, a DNA function. So we know, for example, that uh, uh, acid now, which is thirty two pair of base interferes mostly with DNA PK. We have another compound which is called OX4401, uh, which is 16 pair of base, and it has been designed because we know that length of DNA the, uh, strand is, uh, is uh, interfering mostly with SPARP pathway. So, so we are able to design playing with the vector the looping agent, the length of the oligonucleotide, we are able to design different compounds which will have different properties, always, of course, based with the same principle of action to be agonist uh, decoy and uh, always targeting some DNA function. So we have, again, uh, one uh, OX401 compound which is in, in preclinical stage. Uh, and uh, and uh, we are also working, exploring other targets, uh, which could, um, you know, allow us to design uh, other nucleotides uh, to, uh, to target those different targets. Uh, important thing to say, um, uh, OX401, uh, specifically, but each and every compounds are all independent. This is something which is very important to us. All, the, all and each compounds are independent in terms of patent. Uh, so they are not, we're not doing better compounds. We're not doing, you know, a, a, a second generation compound. Uh, we are doing always very different uh, a, a compounds acting on very different uh, pathways. Uh, and and uh, uh, protected by a different uh, uh, patent by different patent families uh, because uh, we, we want to make sure that uh, each of them uh, is, is running you know its uh, its its race and its development program independently and uh, each of them are really you know representing a, a a real value for the company and not one depending from another. So how would you summarize the news flow over the next, let's say, 12 to 18 months? Well, that's going to be a very interesting and important uh, 12 to, let's say, 24 months uh, to come for us because uh, these are the uh, coming uh, uh, years uh, where ACIDNA will really you know, reveal uh, its, uh, its clinical efficacy. Um, uh, as we are expecting the uh, drive one B, so the uh, full data uh, um, early 2021. Uh, we are also expecting, you know, first data of Revocan, so in combination with Nirakparib to reverse resistance approximately at the same period of time. Uh, and, and so that's, I'm not saying this is the only indication and, and there are other uh, trials that we are aiming to, to implement, but that will be, you know, the first step in, uh, in, in, in giving the demonstration of the clinical interest of the compound. Uh, and of course, you know, very uh, important for the value of the compound and therefore uh, of the company.